Hello and welcome to another Algebra 1 video by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we'll be doing Unit 4, Lesson 11 on the Truth About Graphs. Now that's kind of a, a, a lofty title, but really today we want to make a point about what it means to have the graph of an equation or the graph of an inequality, what that really represents, all right? So let's get into it right now. This is kind of like a big picture lesson, graphs and equations. You know, we've graphed functions by creating input-output tables. Graphs can be produced for any equation by understanding the following, right? Graphing equations and inequalities. The, co the connection between graphs and equations and inequalities is a simple one. One, any coordinate pair x comma y that makes the equation or inequality true lies on the graph. Any coordinate point x comma y that makes the equation or inequality false does not lie on the graph. And number two, the entire graph is the collection of all the xy pairs that make the equation or inequality true. So that is just so amazingly important. You know, you oftentimes generate right, graphs of equations by, you know, putting in x values, doing arithmetic, getting y values out, creating a coordinate pair, or if you've got technology on your side, you do it, you know, by putting it into your calculator and creating x, y pairs. But make sure that you understand this amazingly important and basic truth, right? If a coordinate pair, x comma y, when you plug it into an equation or an inequality, makes it true, then it lies on the graph of that equation or inequality. And if it makes it false, it doesn't. Full stop. And that's really what it's going to be all about in today's lesson, including exercise number one. Let's take a look. Consider the linear equation y equals 4x plus 2. Letter A, does the point 2 comma 10 lie on the graph of this equation? Justify your answer and Letter B, same thing, does the point negative 1 comma 4 lie on the graph of this equation? Justify your answer. All right, so let, let's do letter A together, right? It's this simple. I want to see if this point, right, will make this equation true. So I got to be careful. I'm going to put 10 in for Y. I'm going to put 2 in for X, right? Maybe I should put a little question mark above the equal sign. Right, 4 times 2 is 8, right? 8 plus 2 is 10, so the answer is yes, right? Even if I had no idea what the graph of this equation looks like, I know that the point 2 comma 10 lies on its graph because it makes the equation true. Why don't you pause the video now and see if the point negative 1 comma 4 lies on the graph? Again, absolutely the same idea, the same procedure. I'm going to put 4 in for y. Again, very careful. Make sure to put the right numbers in for the right variables, right? On the right-hand side, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Right. On the right-hand side, negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. Obviously, 4 doesn't equal negative 2, so no. That point does not lie on the graph. All right, so very important. Now granted, y equals 4x plus 2 is the equation of a line, right? It's a linear equation. So in theory, you know, you could take out a piece of graph paper, you could graph that using a table of values or using slope and y-intercept, and you could actually tell whether or not it passes through these two points. Let's take a look at another one that you have less experience with. Let's take a look at exercise number two. The equation y equals 2x squared minus x plus 5 describes a parabola. Does the point 3 comma 20 lie on its graph? Justify. All right. You don't know what a parabola is. In theory, you may have graphed one before in eighth grade math, but if you did, it was only one or two, right? And we certainly haven't done any of these particularly on a sheet of graph paper in this course. But that doesn't mean you can't tell me whether this point lies on that equation. So go ahead and do what we did in exercise one, substitute that point into this equation and see if it makes it true or not. Pause the video now and take a few minutes, try to do as much of this as possible without a calculator.
All right, here we go. We're gonna put 20 in for Y. Put a little question mark there. Uh, three in for X. Everywhere there's an X, I'm gonna put a three in. I have to remember my order of operations, right? The first thing I'm gonna do on that right-hand side is I'm gonna do three squared, which is nine. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the two times nine, which is 18. All right, come on, there we go. Now I'll have 18 minus three, which is 15 plus five. And 15 plus five is 20, so yes. No matter what that thing looks like, I know that that point lies on its graph, right? Because it makes the equation true. Now, I also have inequalities as well as equalities. And you did a little bit of work, or you should have, back in eighth grade math on graphing inequalities that have two variables in them. In the next lesson, that's what we're gonna concentrate on. But right now, right, we will be able to tell whether or not a given point even lies on the graph of the inequality in the same way that we did before. So that's what exercise number three is all about. Let's take a look. Determine for each of the following inequalities whether the point given lies on its graph. All right, let's do letter A together, and then we'll have you do B, C, and D on your own. Again, it's simple enough, right? I'm trying to figure out whether the point four comma one lies on the graph of the inequality y is greater than two x minus five. I'm going to do this the way I did it before with the equations. I'm gonna put one in for y, and I'm gonna see if one is greater than two times four minus five. So is one greater than eight minus five? Well, is one greater than three? And the answer is no, right? So that point doesn't fall on the graph of that inequality because as I just saw there, it doesn't make the inequality true. So what I'd like you to do now is pause the video, do each one of these, it's all just about arithmetic, order of operations, things like that, and see if the points that are given would lie on the graph of those inequalities. Take a moment to do this. All right, well, letter B is a little bit weird. I've got the point two comma eight, and x plus y is less than or equal to 10. So I'm gonna put two in for x, eight in for y, less than or equal to 10, question mark. Is 10 less than or equal to 10? And the answer is yes. 10 is not less than 10, but it's equal to 10. So it does lie on the graph of that inequality. Okay, let's take a look at one that's got a little x squared in it. All right, here we're gonna put two in for y. Two is less than negative three squared minus four. All right, negative three squared, remember, is positive nine, right? Negative three times negative three. And of course, nine minus four is five. Question mark, question mark. And the answer to that is yes, two is in fact less than five. So regardless of what that inequalities graph looks like, one thing I can tell you for certain is that the point negative three comma two lies on its graph. Last one, letter D. Here we've got a little fraction involved, no big deal. Again, I'm gonna put negative one in for Y, greater than or equal to negative six plus 12 divided by three, question mark. Negative one is greater than or equal to six divided by three, right, negative one, is greater than or equal to two, and that's no. Negative one is not greater than or equal to two, so simple enough, okay? The fundamental, most important truth about all graphing, and it doesn't matter whether or not you are in you know, your third year of being a math major in college, or whether you're sitting in algebra one the way you are right now, this will always be true. If a point makes an equation true, it lies on its graph. And if a point doesn't make an equation or inequality true, it does not lie on its graph. Now there's another thing that we're gonna talk about today, which will be the focus of the entire next unit, which is what a system is and what it means for a point to be a solution to a system. 
Now, a system of equations or inequalities, and you've seen these before in last year math, consists of two or more equations or inequalities. A point will be a solution to a system if it makes all of the equations slash inequalities true. All right. So with systems, unlike just normal single equations, we've got multiple ones, and we need to check to see if the point makes all of them true. And if it makes all of them true, then it is a solution to that system. So let's take a look at exercise number four. Determine if the point 3 comma 1 is the solution to the system of equations shown below. Justify your work. All right. So we've got the equation y equals 2x minus 5 and the equation y equals negative 4x plus 13. Okay. I need to see if this point 3 comma 1 makes both of them true. Side note, if it makes the first one false, you're done. The answer is no. If it makes any of the equations false, then it is not a solution to the system. But here we go, right? So I need to check two things now. It's basically twice the work, right? So I'm gonna check y equals 2x minus 5 first. I'll put 1 in for y. I'll put 3 in for x. And I get 1 equals 1. That is true. Notice I'm just putting true and false now instead of yes or no y equals negative 4x plus 13. Again, putting 1 in for y, being very careful, 3 in for x. 1 equals negative 12 plus 13. And negative 12 plus 13 is 1 again. That's also true. Since they're both true, the answer is yes. All right. So the only difference between systems and normal equations are that in a system, for something to be a solution, it has to be a solution to every single equations or inequality in the system. And again, we'll play around with a lot of that in the next unit that is literally called systems of equations um, and inequalities. Anyway, now, we, we can have systems that are also made up of two inequalities. All right, we can have a system that's a mixed equations and inequalities. Almost always when we have a system, the word and is not included. It's just like, here are the two equations or inequalities. So let's take a look at exercise number five. Does the point 5 comma 15 lie in the solution set of the system of inequalities shown below? All right, great. So just like in exercise four, what I have to do is see if the point five comma 15 makes both of those inequalities true. If it does, then the point lies in the solution set of the system of inequalities. If even one of them is false, then it doesn't. Pause the video now and see what you find out about this system. All right, I'm gonna play this problem exactly like I played the last one. Move this out of the way. I'm gonna have y is greater than or equal to 4x minus seven. Let's see if the point makes that one true. 15 is greater than or equal to four times five minus seven. 15 is greater than or equal to 20 minus seven. 15 is greater than or equal to 13, and that is true. All right, one down, one to go. Let's see, y is less than x squared minus 10. Uh, let's see, um, 15 is less than five squared minus 10. 15 is less than 25 minus 10. 15 is less than 15. That is false. And so the answer based on one true and one false is no, all right? Now it's really all about this false. In fact, had we taken our point and checked it in that inequality first and gotten false, we wouldn't have even had to check it in the other inequality. There's just no need to whatsoever, okay? For a system, for a point to be a solution to a system of inequalities or equations, it's gotta make them all true. Let's take a look at one more like this. Now, you don't see this very often, and I'm not really exactly sure why. 
But we could have a system that has both equations and inequalities in them, and yet it's still the same deal, right? For a point to be a solution, it's got to make everything true. Let's take a look at exercise number six. Is the point negative 2 comma 5 a solution to the system shown below? Justify your answer carefully. Y is greater than 4 minus X divided by 2, and Y equals 3X plus 11. All right. Well, go for it. Check your point in both that inequality and in that equation. If it makes them both true, it's a solution. If it makes even one of them false, it's not. Pause the video now and take a few minutes. All right, let's do it. Move that out of the way a bit. Here we go. Let's start with y is greater than 4 minus x divided by 2. Put 5 in for y. 5 is greater than 4 minus, be careful here, negative 2 divided by 2. 5 is greater than 6 divided by 2. 5 is greater than 3. And that, just sneaking it in, is true. All right, now I can check y equals 3x plus 11. All right, I've got 5 is equal to 3 times negative 2 plus 11. 5 is equal to negative 6 plus 11. And negative 6 plus 11 is 5. That is also true. And so since both of them are true, yes, it is a solution. All right. The only way it can be a solution is if everything is true. If even one condition is false, it's not a solution. All right. So let's wrap this up, right? The truth about graphs. Of course, we did a little more than just the truth about graphs, given that we also looked at systems. But basically, it came down to one simple idea. If a point makes an equation true, it lies on the graph of that equation. And if it doesn't, it doesn't, right? As well, we looked at systems, which is multiple equations or inequalities, and there the key is that a point is a solution to a system if it makes every one of the equations or inequalities true. And really, at its base essence, you want to know this stuff, because otherwise, math just becomes this like unending list of procedures, step one, step two, step three, etc. But understanding the basic, basic notions of what it means for a point to be on a graph is very, very important. Because you can always fall back on those if you get confused or you forget the random procedures you're taught. All right, more work on this, obviously, as we go on. For now, I just want to thank you for joining me for another Algebra 1 video by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until I see you again, keep thinking and keep solving problems.